so here in the U.S. we have this diverse, this convergence of diverse ancestries. We have people who were here before anybody else. Remember the Native Americans, Europeans, West Africans, and so we have this melting pot, which is highly polarized uh, 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 social political history here in the U.S. While the U.S. is this continuum of genetic variation, socially it's black or white. You read the paper, it's black versus white. Black rates of health versus white, the economics, black and white. But we know genetically, when we talk about the biology of people in the, in the US, that it's a melting pot. There's a continuum of variation. Most of this polarization in social political history is predicated on slavery and segregation. You have to define the group that you enslave as something different, right? You're not going to enslave your brother. You say, the dudes across the street, something's wrong with them. We need to enslave them. You know, they're different. Okay, so, so that's where this whole you know, black versus white slavery segregation, hot, you know, contributes to this polarized uh, social political history. And then we have the anti-miscegenation laws and the one drop rule. I find that to be quite fascinating because in the U.S., all you have to do is have one ancestor who's black and you're black, right? Just one. Somewhere in that family tree and you're black for the most part. But now things are changing a little bit. People are saying, well, you know, I'm Cablasian, you know. <laughs> but even... You know, and I, I use this as an example all the time. Holly Berry, you know, we know that her mother's white, her father's black, but she's black, right? I claim her as African American. I'm sure most of you would if she came in right now and sat right there. You'd say she's a beautiful black woman, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you? Of course. But half of her DNA comes from Europe. At least half. So, you know, you have to understand this. We're talking about these social political constructs here. Genetically, she could be more European than some Europeans. So when we talk, of, because of this diversity in the African American population, we have some very unique features. High genetic diversity because of the antiquity of being African. The African gene pool is very old and it's very diverse. The older it is, the more um, uh, differences that are there in the gene pool. And then we have gene, uh, gene flow or admixture with non-Africans, mainly white men. And I'll get into that in a second. Don't get disturbed, don't get upset. The pattern of variation differs geographically. So as I mentioned earlier, 95% of the enslaved Africans came from West and Central Africa, 5% from uh, Mozambique and Madagascar. Interesting dynamics, and you look at um, where the enslaved Africans were brought during uh, the period of slavery, it, it changed periodically. But for the most part, you know, they were major um, ports of entry in Charleston, New York City was a major port, the Chesapeake Bay Area, and of course New Orleans. I'm not going to get into that history, but it's a very interesting history, very interesting history. But this is where black folk are now. This is the last census. So if you see pretty much where they were brought, these crescent states, southeast crescent, crescent uh, uh, states, uh, we call here the southern um, uh, uh, mixture of states, this is where you find most of the black folk. This is the Mississippi River. This is Chicago, Detroit, New York. You don't find them out in Iowa, <laughs> unless they're playing basketball or something. <laughs> this is Oakland. Oh, I went backwards, didn't I? These are where Hispanics are. So when I talk about segregation, this is real. Even when you look at it in a, in a, in a, um, uh, a continental aspect, you know, what's the dividing line? Here, Texas, right? Eastern Texas is African American, Western Texas, Hispanic, Northern Texas is white. Very interesting mix. In fact, Texas now is the old South Carolina. What South Carolina was for race during slavery, now Texas is. So a lot of issues of race are emerging out of Texas. And so it would be interesting to watch what happens, especially politically, especially that we have an interesting president that came out of there, or two of them that came out of there. <laughs> the last census, Tiger Woods was very successful in saying what? I'm more than black. So you actually were able to say you were more than black in the last census. So this is where people of mixed ancestry or mixed race, who reported that you know, in terms across the US. And you find that Oklahoma, a very large portion of folks in Oklahoma said they, were, they weren't white, just white, or just black, or just uh, Native American. Everybody wanted to be whatever they were and Native American. You see what I'm saying? Because <laughs> there was a lot of things emerging in Native American uh, politics. So it was cool. I mean, the Seminoles bought what? Hard Rock Cafe. So they went from ashy to classy overnight. <laughs> so this is interesting because we talk about defining ourselves or having you know, somebody define us. Who's black? The answer depends on where you are. In the US, because of the legislated, it was socially legislated by the one drop rule or the rule of hypo descent, you are black. 
because, as I mentioned, you have one ancestor who's black. But now everybody wants to see what else is in my genome, what else is there. This is exciting because not only could we uh, say something about family history, but we can also say something about deep history, okay? And so there are two types of analysis, the biogeographic analysis or admixture analysis, if you guys saw that PBS special that I was a part of where we t traced Oprah's roots and um, uh, 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 Brother Burroughs was also involved in that. And then the lineage-based ancestry, which is more specific, and that's what some of the stuff that I'm involved in, where we trace maternal and paternal lines, specific segments of DNA. One's called mitochondrial DNA, which is paternally inherited. The other one's uh, uh, Y-chromosome DNA, which is paternally inherited, father to son. And they're very unique. They have unique features and um, are very informative for lineage ancestry. I'm not going to get much into this. I know I don't have that much time, but <laughs> when we look at these markers, what? One minute. Are you serious? Okay. All right. <laughs> this is a paper I wrote where we talked about the use of genetics to say something about personalized um, uh, genetic history. And um, this is just a map showing the different maternal lineages that we know that are uh, continent specific. Like for instance, these L lineages are common in Africa, these in Europe, these in the Middle East and Asia. And then the founding of the Native American, the four major Native American lineages out of the Asian um, uh, ancestry uh, gene pool. So this is very fascinating stuff. And there are studies are ongoing. People are still finding new lineages because we're sampling more and more throughout the world. So the science in terms of African ancestry, informative DNA markers, as I mentioned, Y chromosome and mitochondrial DNA, we have a very large database that, ex that allows us to explore these lineages. And real quickly, I have 30 seconds, right? <laughs> <laughs> Let's say, for instance, we look at a mother's DNA sequence and, a fa and, a, and a, her daughter's DNA sequence. It should be the same, right? Because, you know, it's her daughter, right? So what we do is we look for those polymorphisms. This is in mitochondrial DNA. And we look for polymorphisms. These are those things that are different. And uh, the son should also, because he inherits his mitochondrial DNA from his mother, he just can't transparent, I mean, transmit it on, but the, the daughter can. And if you look at the neighbor's mitochondrial DNA sequence, it should be different, right? <laughs> right? So here we see it's different. Most of the time, it's different. So what we do is we look at this profile in that family and compare it to profiles in a database from different populations. What we do with African ancestry is actually look at a large database, a large collection of these lineages from Africa. And so, for instance, here we find a match. This is just a, a general um, uh, way of displaying it. We find a match with the Fulani from Nigeria. And you see that those polymorphisms match, and they're different from, let's say, the Akan from Ghana or the Mandinka from Senegal. It's pretty simple, CSI stuff. It's very similar to CSI. Okay? And then you say, well, the Fulani have a very large dis geographic distribution. Yeah, but many of those lineages are restricted geographically to certain areas. And so the Fulani in Nigeria are a bit different from the Fulani in Niger. Okay? 